Uh, we're live, baby. Hey, we're everybody. <laughs> Welcome back to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ. And this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Today, I have Robbie Barbero. He's part of a dynamic duo of Mastering Diabetes, and he is the co-author of the book by the same name, which, by the way, is a New York Times bestseller. And he's here to answer any questions you have. Like, for example, doesn't fruit make you fat? We all know that's true. True, just like potatoes, right? <laughs> I'm being facetious, unfortunately, because there are people that believe that, Robbie, still to this day. It's it's very sad. Um, we're going to talk all about it. We're going to bust some myths and answer questions. I love going live with you, Chef AJ. And can we please celebrate this epic new background? Thank you. Well, you know, it's from Potato Wisdom, Janine Elder, she is the greatest designer and I love it too. Thank you so much for noticing. It's my first day using so, it. Yeah. So what's in the bowl there? So I see, is that a, a yellow bell pepper, I think? Yeah? Yellow bell pepper. Potato. Uh, there's a tomato, a carrot, asparagus, looks like a spinach leaf, broccoli, and a cucumber. That is fantastic. So those yep. are foods that we can eat in abundance and enjoy and lower our calorie density, right? Yeah. You know, I think that sometimes vegetables are the only group that's safe anymore. You know, when you think about all the dietary styles, paleo, keto, you know, weighing and measuring, you know, whatever, nobody, people, vegetables seem kind of safe, you know? That's, that's right. That's vegetables and leafy greens, herbs and spices. Those ones seem to be okay. Mushrooms are pretty consistent across the board. You're so, you're so right about that. There's certain categories that people actually don't argue about and that's that those are the categories yeah. so leafy greens and water are probably the only thing that is safe from attack from one of these dietary groups it, it, i just don't get how people can attack foods that have been part of the human diet for history you know potatoes oh you know beans have lectins fruit have, fruit turns to sugar i mean it's the diet nonsense out there is crazy and that's part of what i love about what you do is you make it simple and practical and easy to understand. If you dig deep, deep into the research and all these, you know, scientists and they all have, they, they ask fascinating questions. They get very intrigued and interested. Okay, what about this? What about that? And it's always these minor minutia details that actually don't matter in the grand scheme of things. We know what foods to eat, what foods to predominantly consume in order to reach your ideal body weight, in order to reverse insulin resistance, in order to actually improve your microbiome, improve your gut health. We know what foods to eat to do that. And we're trying to get that information out there. And like you said, like it's mind boggling how crazy it is. And the fact that humans don't understand what to eat is kind of embarrassing. We're the only species that can't figure out what the heck to eat. It's funny because on the show, I had Dr. David Katz, who recently wrote a book called How to Eat. And I said, with all due respect, why do we need a book called How to Eat? We should know how to eat. We should know how and what. Yes, absolutely. And Dr. Katz, boy, he's a, he's a true legend in this space. A real, real great scientist right there. Absolutely. Well, you know, I said to Dr. Esselstyn on Monday when I had him on, I said, do you ever get tired of answering the same question over and over for him specifically, what's wrong with oil? Do you, Robbie, who eats a primarily fruit-based diet ever get tired of people saying, well, you can't eat fruit, fruit turns to sugar and sugar turns to fat. <laughs> I welcome that question. I, I can't wait to answer it for the rest of my life. I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm in for this for the long haul. We have a lot of people to help. And every time I get asked that question, that means somebody is curious and they're ready to hear some new information. And if I get an opportunity to share it, I'm, I'm all in. I can't wait. And I feel honored and, and privileged that I even have this opportunity. And it's my responsibility. I know Cyrus feels that way too. It's our responsibility to take, take on our own shoulders what all the luminaries have done before us. You know, Dr. McDougall, Nathan Pritikin beforehand, you know, I mean, David Katz. I mean, the list goes on and on and on uh, of people who have been doing this work. Dr. Esselstyn, like you just mentioned, Dr. Colin Campbell. I mean, I, I, I'm not going to try and name them all because I'll miss a bunch. But they've been doing it. They put in the hard work for decade after decade after decade. And now it's our turn to do the same thing and, and reach the people who need it the most. 
you know, th th don't take this the wrong way, but in a way you and Cyrus are lucky for having type one diabetes yes. because of the results you're getting. People, people cannot argue with the results that you're getting. And so they can't say it doesn't work when clearly it does. So Chef AJ, I couldn't agree more with that. I just went on a very similar rant this morning on my Instagram page, uh, my Instagram story, but it is an absolute blessing for us. And the fact that we continue to inject insulin on a daily basis, because we're living with type one diabetes, our beta cells are not producing sufficient quantities of insulin. In my case, my beta cells are producing close to zero, an undetectable amount. I have a C peptide result of less than 0.1. That means my body's producing close to zero insulin, if not 100% zero. So the point is, type one diabetes, anybody living with type one diabetes, we are the perfect test subjects for insulin sensitivity on a day in and day out basis, meal by meal. We know exactly how much insulin we inject. We count the carbohydrates that we're consuming. So we know how much insulin to inject and we monitor our blood glucose frequently. If you're using finger sticks, you're probably measuring eight to 12 times a day. If you're like me and you have a continuous glucose monitor, you see your blood glucose readings every five minutes. I get a new reading on my phone, which talks to my Apple watch, and I can see exactly what is happening. I can see the blood glucose profile while I'm sleeping, while I'm exercising, before meals, after meals, and I can get direct feedback. How much insulin do I need to consume X number of carbohydrates? So, one of the things that the nitty gritty people will, will pick out and, and be skeptical of is, hey, look, you and Cyrus, you have really good carbohydrate to insulin ratios. Like the amount of insulin you need to inject for the food that you eat is really good because you eat a lot of fiber and there's a lot of fructose in the fruit that you're consuming and fructose doesn't require insulin. Therefore, your numbers are misleading. So I took it upon myself to dig deep into the details here. And I tried, I figured out how much glucose am I consuming on a day-to-day -day basis? How many grams of just straight up glucose am I putting in my body at any given meal? And I compared that result to how much glucose I was consuming when I was doing a plant-based ketogenic diet. So I was doing a plant-based ketogenic diet, I would consume about 70 grams of total carbohydrate per day. 40 of those were fiber, 30, was net carbohydrate. And when I was doing that diet, I would consume 10 grams of glucose per day and I would use about 10 units of insulin. So it's a one to one ratio, glucose to insulin. Nowadays, I'm consuming over 700 grams of carbohydrate. You take out the fiber, you take out the fructose. Now you're somewhere around like 270-ish grams of glucose per day, taking a physiological normal amount of insulin, about 27 units, which is where you want to be. You want to be somewhere between like 20-ish and 50-ish. That's going to be like what a normal, healthy human pancreas secretes. And now you put, that puts me at a 10 to 1 ratio for glucose. So 1 to 1, 10 to 1. That's a 900% change in glucose sensitivity and my, my body's ability to tolerate glucose. So the point is we have worked with hundreds and hundreds of people living with insulin-dependent diabetes at this point, and we see it every single time, consistently this is like objects falling at 9.8 meters per second. This is science. When you lower your fat intake and increase your intake of whole carbohydrate-rich foods, we're not talking about juices, we're not talking about Twinkies, processed food, we're talking about whole carbohydrate-rich foods, you will see your insulin sensitivity improve. And all of us type ones see these numbers meal by meal by meal, and you cannot argue with it. So the results speak for themselves. And as this book has come out and it's reaching more and more people and people are getting to apply the method, even the skeptics, Jeff, AJ, they have nothing to say. Like nobody can say it doesn't work. They'll come up with some random thing of like why they think, you know, you're having too much fiber or some, some random stuff, or you're missing this nutrient or missing that nutrient. But nobody says to us, oh, what you're saying isn't true that more carbohydrates, less fat improves insulin sensitivity. You just can't deny it. The results speak for themselves. And it's that principle, that personal experience that led us to dig into the research. And wait a minute, like, are we just anomalies? Are the people we're working with anomalies? Like what's going on here? 
And it goes back a hundred years of evidence-based research of doctors and physicians documenting in the world's top journals. We're talking the Lancet, we're talking um, diabetes care, we're talking um, internal medicine, like top, top journals documenting that as carbohydrates are increased and fat is decreased, insulin works more efficiently. And that means you can reverse prediabetes. You can reverse prediabetes in 100% of cases, Jeff AJ, because at that point you've caught it early enough. You still have enough insulin being produced. Type two diabetes, if you have it for a long time and you continue to abuse yourself with these meals and your pancreas gets exhausted from trying to keep up, it's possible that your beta cells can be so exhausted that you might need to use insulin. And that's okay. That's going to be a person living with insulin dependent type two diabetes. They don't have antibodies. There's no, you know, questioning of whether or not this is type one or type 1.5. It's blatantly type two. And that's just an exhaust, exhausted pancreas. And that's okay. Injecting insulin is not the enemy. I know people are concerned that, oh, insulin makes me fat. No, insulin doesn't make you fat. Excess insulin makes you fat. And you need excess insulin because you're living with insulin resistance and you develop insulin resistance because you're consuming excess dietary fat. It's really that simple. And once you reverse that process, you can gain full control of your health and reduce your long-term chronic disease risk in addition to improving your quality of life right now. Amen, brother. You know, uh, Lulu, who's watching live, says, I wish my husband would take better care of himself. He has type 2 diabetes and just let the meds help. He just lets the meds help him. But isn't it true that the meds really don't help? They don't, they don't make you better. They just give you better numbers. That's exactly right. They are giving people, unfortunately, false hope. It really is. It is a false hope that, oh, wow, I'm taking my Genuvia. I'm taking my metformin and all my A1C has dropped, my fasting blood glucose is lower. You are not addressing the root cause. This is a Band-Aid solution. And what you gotta do is figure out, wait a minute, why do I need the medication in the first place? You did not develop high blood glucose readings because of a deficiency in metformin or a deficiency in Genuvia or Trulicity or whatever medication is being prescribed. We really want to get at the root cause here. And insulin resistance is the root issue when it comes to blood glucose fluctuations. That's why the subtitle of our book is The Revolutionary Method to Reverse Insulin Resistance Permanently in Type 1, Type 1.5, Type 2, Prediabetes, and Gestational Diabetes, because it's, it's insulin resistance that's at the core there. So like you're saying, Chef AJ, we have a lot of data, a lot of research showing that even if you lower your A1C, lower your fasting blood glucose with medications, you are not better off for long-term chronic disease risk. And it's actually heart disease that is the number one killer of people living with diabetes. So people are just going all over, all gung-ho, fast, and just focused on A1C blood glucose readings, A1C blood glucose readings, and they're missing the bigger picture. We want to address it all. And that's what the Mastering Diabetes Method is all about. Nice. We have a question from Gina that I don't think I ever actually asked you, but how did you and Cyrus hook up? Because he lives clear across the globe. Okay, so Cyrus, here's a, it's a fascinating story. I'm so glad that you, you're asking. Now, I first knew about Cyrus when I made this transition to a low-fat plant-based whole food diet in December of 2006, because he was one of the testimonials in a book that changed my life. And this book uh, was documenting how you could eat fruits and vegetables and improve your health. And so Cyrus was a, a type one, obviously, and they were telling his story. And I Googled his name and I saw he was doing a lot of long distance endurance events. He was a, just a fit dude. And I'm like, wow, this is cool. It's inspiring. This is a, a good motivation for me to keep going. I'm, I'm on a good path here. And so I just knew of him and hadn't talked to him or connected with him for probably, I don't know, maybe six, seven, eight years later. And we met up at a presentation in Oakland, California. We were presenting to some people at a health event 
And at the time <clears throat> he was doing coaching for people with diabetes. I was also doing coaching on the side while I was working at Forks Over Knives. So we were both basically doing the same thing. And we're like, hey, you know what? We should, we should work together. And eventually this is in 2016. We started doing some small group coaching together. I joke, we were kind of like dating a little bit. We both had our own brands, our own companies, our own website. We're like, oh, let's join together and do this small group coaching program. And we did it and it was really successful. We had a lot of fun together. We're like, hey, you know what? I think this is gonna work. Let's take it to the next step. And in 2017, that's when we started Mastering Diabetes full-time and we stopped maintaining our other coaching practices and went all in on this one destination. And that was our goal. Our goal was to fulfill a need that was not being met. Prior to us creating Mastering Diabetes, if you were living with any form of diabetes and you wanted to go to one website to get all the nitty gritty details that you would need to make this lifestyle change for the different types, type one, type 1.5, pre-diabetes, gestational, type two, and all the medications. There wasn't one place to go to. Our good friend, Neil Barnard, who wrote the foreword, he had great resources on his PCRM website, but not super, super detailed, not super nuanced, wasn't providing individual coaching. At Forks Over Knives, we were publishing great stuff on diabetes, great articles and inspirational, but not the details. And we were like, you know what? We're gonna create that destination. And that's what we've set out to do. And with the support of all the legends in this space, just like you, Chef AJ, um, we've been able to make a difference and our book is making a difference. And honestly, I'm just the most grateful person ever. There's nothing better than the testimonials that come in. You know this, Chef AJ, like there's just nothing that makes you, it makes you feel happier and like worth it. Like it's just, it's just incredible. Everybody's story is unique. Everybody's story is special and I cannot get enough of it. So that's how we came together. Well, that is great because you actually had a pretty good job even before this one. Hey, I have, was having a lot of fun at Forks Over Knives and really happy to see um, what's continued to grow since, since I've left. It's a beautiful thing. So uh, we got a lot of people to help and we're all working on it together. Great. Well, we have a question for you from, who's this, who is it from? From Emma. Does Ravi practice time-restricted eating? Mm, time-restricted eating. Okay, that's a good question. I don't really think about it, but um, I definitely try to finish my dinners early. Can you tell me if, if, this, if this applies, Chef AJ? And if you do it yourself, I'm curious. But I try and finish my dinner early um, and get like a good gap between finishing dinner and then eating breakfast. But look, as a person with type 1 diabetes, sometimes you go low before, you know, at night and you have to have like a snack or something. So it's not something I personally focus on. I'm not trying to lose weight at this point. So I, I like the flexibility of just eating uh, what I want when I can, but I do think early dinners are, are beneficial. Yeah. I, I mean, we're hearing that from a lot of people just for sleep and just yeah. a, a longevity and other reasons. I mean, our ancestors, they, they didn't eat it all night, you know, well, they didn't right. have computers either and weren't uh, watching Netflix either. So it's a whole different, <laughs> <That's right. laughs> a That's right. whole, whole different ball game. Yeah. You know, I, I learned so much from you and Cyrus and I still love, I actually love hearing when you say these things again, because I don't explain them as well as you not living with diabetes. But when you talk about how high carb, low fat increases insulin sensitivity, there's many people that believe that oil is good. And even now some people in the plant-based space that are doctors are saying that vegan keto is good and that it's, it's not going to affect heart disease. And whether that's true or not, it can't be true for the, the kind of people that you and Cyrus work with. Yeah, so there's no question that when you, first off, I want to say like, I respect everybody out there and, and I really appreciate the contributions everybody's trying to make. And I, I think that when it comes to the keto world, whether it's the animal-based keto world or the vegan-based keto world, whatever, um, I, I feel like we're all, we're all in this together. And, and I, I respect that these people are trying to make changes. They're trying to do the best they can they're taking the information that they believe and they know, and they're trying to share it. And, and I respect that because I think the biggest problem right now in the in, in the healthcare world is apathy and the people that don't care and aren't trying and are doing nothing. That, that's our biggest, biggest problem <clears throat> costing us a lot of money. So I respect this group. And I want to say that if you choose to do a vegan keto diet, 
the one thing that I, I know for certain is that you are going to be significantly less glucose tolerant because you're choosing to eat that way and live that dietary pattern, put yourself in, you know, this uh, fat burning mode. <clears throat> if that's what you choose to do, that's okay. That's your choice. We, and I think everybody acknowledges this on both sides. We don't have any data on what's going to happen. We don't know for sure one way or the other, but if it's me and I'm going to like, which one am I going to choose? Which one would I feel good encouraging other people to do as far as, you know, just safety and, and longevity is I'm going to go with something that we do have a lot of data on that we do have historical groups of people and, and large societies following for decade after decade after decade. And we can look at them. And when it comes to looking at the longest lived people who have low chronic disease rates and high qualities of life into their 70s, 80s, 90s, and people living into their 100s, people becoming centenarians, those groups of people across the board eight carbohydrate rich foods. They were living in a way where they could process glucose. They could metabolize glucose in the form of, you know, if coming from all these carbohydrate rich foods they're eating. So to me, and the, the fat intake is different. It varies in these groups, in the blue zones, in some of these other um, areas of the world that have been studied, but aren't necessarily um, <clears throat> labeled as a blue zone, but there are groups of people. Um, and their fat intake is different, but none of them like avoid carbohydrate rich foods. And that to me, it's just, it's a concern. I would rather be glucose tolerant. And I really firmly believe and have seen that the benefits that people receive from doing a ketogenic diet, you get equally, if not better, when you execute a low fat plant-based whole food diet properly. And I know there are some people that run into concerns, maybe when it comes to satiety, they run into concerns or when it comes to just cravings and, and some people run into microbiome issues. And these problems do happen and they are real. And that is the reason why we are so passionate about what we do at Mastering Diabetes and why we offer the services we offer, the coaching. And, and we have a virtual retreat coming up with Chef AJ will be a part of and teaching these, these nuances and also guiding people towards working with qualified medical professionals to address some of these issues. I really do believe that um, if somebody is, wants to and is committed to following this approach, that they can make it work despite some challenges that arise. And the challenges honestly happen in a very small number of people. Like they are real. Um, not everybody's transition is just like smooth and perfect and and, and, and then any medical attention or something, not everybody's like that, but most people are. Most people, they make the transition. They follow what you're teaching, Chef AJ. They, they follow the program in the Master Diabetes book. We have two 21-day meal plans in there. Like you follow that and you just, you get the results. Like it just, it just works. You become more insulin sensitive. So Again, I, 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 again, I have respect to plant-based. If you're doing a plant-based ketogenic diet, you're putting in so much effort. You are being so diligent about what you're not eating and, and you're eating so much fiber. You're eating a lot of nutrients. Like there's, there's a lot of things to celebrate there. There's a lot to celebrate. And I am not here to like put that down or tell somebody who's doing that, like you're doing something wrong. You shouldn't do it. Like I, I don't have negative things to say about, about anything, okay? I'm just saying that, you know, answering the question for somebody who's curious, like, why don't you do that, Robbie? You know, why don't you teach that? And, and if for, for me, it, it comes back to that glucose tolerance. I think the optimal way for the human body to run the way this machinery is designed is, is being in a glucose tolerant state. I think it's best for your, your brain health. Um, to, I think it's best for just performance, um, for energy. I think being insulin sensitive is something that really matters. And I know there's a lot of debate around like using the word insulin sensitivity in this context. So I want to be very nuanced and detailed. It's, it's glucose tolerance. And, and again, if anybody wants to argue with me on this and they want to get into the nitty gritty, I'm fine with it. Like, let's go bring it. I'm doing it on Instagram all day long. Show me how much this, this particularly would have to be a type one, but show me 
how much glucose you're consuming on your plant-based ketogenic diet and how much insulin you're, you're injecting. And then let's look at the numbers and I'll show you how much glucose I'm consuming and how much insulin I'm using. And then we can have a conversation about glucose tolerance and we can go from there. Nice. Thank you. So Blair says, any tips for communicating with my doctor? I was diagnosed with insulin resistance related to PCOS taking metformin when whole food plant-based SOS free May 1st and want off metformin. Mm. Okay. So PCOS, that's, that's a challenging condition. Um, and we're not necessarily saying, nobody's saying that you can reverse PCOS. But what we are saying is you can reverse insulin resistance, which is a symptom of PCOS. And when you go through the process of reversing insulin resistance, many of the other symptoms related to PCOS begin to disappear and your quality of life increases and your chances of getting pregnant increases. And you know, the, the cysts that you might be developing, they can um, subside and, and not become an issue moving forward. So we're talking about addressing the symptoms by addressing insulin resistance. So, I mean, the fact that they don't need metformin, that sounds good, but I'm not sure exactly what the rest of the question was. What do they, what do they say again? Well, well, I guess she wants to know how to talk to her doctor. How to talk to her doctor. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Got it. Okay. So that's a good question. I guess the main thing is what would be your goal? Like, what do you, what do you want to accomplish? And we teach people to go to your doctor and tell let's, this might not apply specifically to this person, but in general, let's say you're living with type two diabetes and you're coming to your doctor and you want to tell the doctor, Hey, look, I, I've read this book, Mastering Diabetes. I, I've looked at Chef AJ's recipes and I'm ready to go. And I want to, I want to use less insulin. I want to get off insulin. I want to stop using metformin. What you want to do is you want to ask the doctor, what do you need to see from me in order to lower my medication use? Put it on them, have them tell you, okay, and they're going to have to come up with an answer. You, you really put them on the spot there, a good spot. And they have to decide, okay, huh, what do I need to see for you to reduce your medications? Well, I'm going to have to see that your fasting blood glucose is under 100. What we recommend is if your fasting blood glucose is under 100 for seven days in a row, it's time to start um, changing some of your oral medications. But you got to talk to your doctor and work with them to understand the nuances there. But let your doctor tell you what they need to see in order for you to achieve your goal, whatever that goal is. And then you just go and you do it, you tackle it. And that approach is extremely effective rather than being like, oh, hey doc, I, I just, just reduce my meds, reduce my meds. Like, no, 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 let's put a system in place here. Let's be objective about it. Let's do it safely. And that is how you can reach your goals. Nice, thank you. So we have a question. My, the thing I watch goes really quickly, so I apologize when there's a delay because it moves. What I see moves. Pauline says, my sister went whole food plant-based eight months ago and lost 51 pounds, has been a type two diabetic for 17 years. She is off her high blood pressure medication and two of her diabetic medications, but she still wakes up every morning with high blood sugar ranging from 140 to 180. She can't figure out why this could be in the dawn phenomenon, what can you do about it? She still takes metformin. Okay. That's a great question. We hear that one all the time. Why is my fasting blood glucose higher than later on in the day after I've eaten meals? And it's a good question. It really does in a lot of cases stem to a, a little bit of insulin resistance still being an issue. And that glucose that your liver is putting into your bloodstream early in the day in order to get you ready to go, get your body the energy it needs, your body's just not processing that glucose efficiently. And I think that person, I would suggest communicating with your doctor and ask for a C-peptide test, do a fasting C-peptide test. Let's see how much insulin is still being produced. I would also be very curious to see blood glucose readings throughout the day. Uh, we wanna see readings before and after each meal. Ideally, a one hour after, and then two hours after, and then three hours after. Really get a lot of data. If they could strap on a CGM, even better, a continuous glucose monitor, whether that's a Freestyle Libre or a Dexcom G6, um, that would be fascinating information as well. 
but we want to see what's happening throughout the day and um, what's just happening overall. I think also an A1C would be interesting here to know what's going on there. Um, but there's, some, there's a lot to celebrate there. You've lost 51 pounds. You stopped, I think they stopped some other diabetes medications. So you want to just keep going. Maybe there's more weight to lose, but you're cert that person is certainly in a heck of a better position than they were before they adopted a plant-based diet. That's terrific. You know, we called this broadcast about how to overcome the quarantine slump and gain energy and lose weight. So I want to talk a little bit about how you're going to help people with that, because you and Cyrus used to do a, a, an actual in-person retreat, which sounds fabulous, but probably isn't going to be possible right now. So you decided to do a virtual retreat. So talk a little bit about that, and I'll post a link if people want to find out more about it. Fantastic. So we love our in-person retreats. We cannot wait to bring them back when it is safe and that's allowed. Right now, you cannot fly into Costa Rica. Um, they, they are not allowing that. So regardless of that situation, we actually have found that creating a virtual retreat has a lot of advantages. So now we get to help you make changes while you're in your home environment which is really powerful. So you have the immersion experience at home and we're gonna go through helping you create meals in the kitchen. So Chef AJ is gonna be doing a demo, answering questions. We are going to be actually doing exercise with you through Zoom. Everything is gonna happen on Zoom, just like this meeting is happening on Zoom. And we are going to give you a whole meal plan and a grocery shopping list. You're gonna go out and buy everything and then you'll be able to prepare the meals. We're gonna to eat together. We're going to have scientific discussions together, but also bringing in your questions, which is one of our favorite parts about the retreat in Costa Rica um, is where we can have that personal conversation. And that's part of this event. So you can also sign up for additional coaching that's going to happen after the retreat. If you want, we have small group coaching and private coaching if people need more individual support. But to us, the retreat experience is so powerful because of the personal time we get to spend together. And we're just going to be hanging out and talking and getting to address your specific challenges, the nuances you're going through, even if it's just talking about certain flavors or textures that you're missing. And hey, how can I, how can I recreate these dishes? How can I satisfy this craving? I just cannot get over. Why is my fasting bug glucose 140, 180? We're going to get into all that. We're going to have you filling out decision trees, but it's going to be a, a really fun experience. It's happening July 23rd to the 26th. So you're going to come join us on Thursday night. We're going to kick it off, opening ceremony, have dinner together. Then we have Friday, Saturday, and Sunday together where we're doing exercise. You're getting lectures. Again, part of the benefit of doing a virtual retreat is that we can bring in a lot of people. It's very difficult to fly all of our favorite experts from all over the world to come to Costa Rica. But digitally, we got Chef AJ joining us. We have Dr. Will Bolskowitz joining us, author of Fiber Fueled, New York Times bestseller. We have Team Sharezai joining us, author of The Alzheimer's Solution. We have um, special interviews with Rick Dina, with Rip Esselstyn. It's just a great, great crew of people. And it's really, really going to be a lot of fun. Dr. Jim Loomis will be presenting. He's sort of like our medical director at our retreats in the past, uh, past retreat. So you're going to hear a lot from him. He was featured in Game Changers. He is a real great leader in the plant-based world. He's a medical director of the Barnard Medical Clinic in Washington, DC. So bringing his expertise is going to be very valuable as well. But here's the most important thing. You will see significant results in a three-day period. You commit to that Friday, Saturday, Sunday with us, and we are going to do this together. And you're going to leave with a lot of hope. You're going to leave with a lot of confidence that you can do this. And you know it actually does improve your blood glucose control, your ability to lose weight. When you lose weight after like a three-day retreat, you're like, wow. We've had people come and say, I have not been able to lose weight for the past 20 years. Then they come. And they apply the principles of calorie density, which you've all heard Chef AJ talking about for decades now as well. A true luminary right here in front of us. Now, we're going to teach you how to eat 
as much as you want by selecting the right foods. I'm not sitting here, I'm sitting here saying you're going to be able to come and eat whatever you want and just like eat, uh, you know, dried figs all day or something. That's not going to work. <laughs> okay. We're going to teach you how to eat large amounts of delicious meals, delicious recipes, sauces, stews, you know, wraps, all these amazing dishes. As long as you're being conscious about which foods you're putting into them and you will enjoy them and you will feel full and you will feel satisfied and you will see results. And again, it's, it's amazing how quick it happens for anybody who's listening to this, who is actually using diabetes medications right now. We do expect to see an adjustment in three days and that's powerful as long as you come and you follow it. And that's the whole point. We're going to do it together. We got a whole plan for you. We got a whole recipe guide. It's going to be fun. So this is great, Robbie. Uh, two questions. Dina says, do non-diabetics go to the retreat as well? And similarly, Stephanie says, I do not have diabetes. Would this retreat still be beneficial or interesting if I'm just curious around the, about the science behind health? The answer is absolutely yes. Now, um, I want to say that we have a lot of people who don't have diabetes come to our retreats in Costa Rica in the past because their partner has the condition or they came with their mother or something like that. That's what's commonly happened in the past and consistently, consistently across the board. These people living, who are not living with diabetes have had extraordinary results, whether they dropped their, you know, they got off some blood pressure medication that's happened. Um, whether they have finally lost some weight whether their aches and pains went away, their bloating went away, like all kinds of health issues are addressed when you adopt the mastering diabetes method. So I want to let you know that that's true. You're, everybody is welcome. But I also want to let you know that it definitely is a diabetes focused event. When we are giving you lectures about insulin resistance, about intermittent fasting, about exercise, it has a diabetes twist to all of it, a blood glucose management twist. So as long as you're curious about diabetes nuances, you will love this event. Like if you're a healthcare professional, if you're a dietitian, if you are a nurse, if you're a doctor, if you just care about the topic of diabetes and blood glucose management and insulin resistance, then you will absolutely love this because you're gonna get these you know, nuanced lectures where you can actually ask questions and we'll answer them but you also get access to all the videos for life. So everything's gonna be recorded. There's a bunch of pre-recorded material from previous live events in Costa Rica that you will also have access to and you get to keep for life. So it's a lot of nuance, kind of like hidden information maybe to a certain extent that we just haven't really talked about in other places and you can access it through the retreat and you're gonna love the meals. You're going to love meeting new people. You're going to, they're going to become your new best friends. You're going to be hanging out on Zoom all the time with people who are actually like-minded. That's one of our favorite parts about the retreat is people come and wow, for the first time, I'm immersed in a group of people that aren't questioning what I'm doing. They're actually supporting what I'm doing and they're going down the same path as me and that feels good. And that's a little uh, hopefully refreshing for a lot of people with the, you know, the challenges of, of social situations that we're all living in right now. Well, what's really cool is that to take a whole family to Costa Rica, airfare and things like that, that's expensive. So the whole, it's the whole family could be involved. They, everybody absolutely. could watch. A hundred percent. Absolutely. And, and we've made it, you know, very affordable. And so you're exactly right. You don't have to fly there. You don't have to, you know, put your car at the airport or whatever, pay for airport parking and, and airlines and, and all that stuff. It's just, a rich experience that's much more affordable. So you're hundred percent right. And this will be done through Zoom, correct? Everything's gonna happen on Zoom. And how long do people have access to the materials? For life, for life. You're gonna get everything's gonna be recorded and you can refer back to them. You're gonna get your recipe PDF with your shopping list. You can always go back and make those recipes when you wanna think of some fond memories and uh, just refer back to it when, ne when needed. Right. That's great. Well, I'm going to come. <laughs> yes, we're going to be there. 
You're, you're one of the highlights of the event. Oh, that's going to be really fun. Yeah, I've got a couple of, of recipes I think you'll like because two of them are actually 100% raw. So here we go. It, it's a salad because I, I, you know, I mean, I, I wanted to make good recipes, of course, but I said, you know, I wonder if I can include a couple of recipes that Ravi would like. And so one is a salad that's raw, but it's a configuration that maybe you haven't thought about before and one Ooh. is a dressing. So that'll be kind of I'm cool. so excited. I think you'll like it. So let's see. There was another question about, uh, okay. I, like I said, I apologize for like, I get slow, but because it moves very, very fast. But here's about, uh, they're saying, oh, um, wish my dad would do your program. <laughs> and, and, and Jillian says, Robbie, I wish my dad would do your program. I wish he'd read your book and watch it. you and explain your program can you call him for me and convince him you know i bet you robbie's the kind of guy that would jillian but that's not going to convince your dad you know i always think of that saying a man convinced against his will is of the same you know people will call me robbie because their loved ones their spouses their children uh, you know somebody has gained a lot of weight and they'll say do something and you know a long time ago i did try to respectfully say something you can't you can't get involved in that way if the person doesn't want the help I couldn't agree more with you and you're right. I am the type of person I would make that phone call if that was if I actually believed it would work. Uh, but you're hundred percent right. They have to want it. And this is one of the most challenging aspects of adopting a low fat plant-based whole food lifestyle and experiencing the benefits is watching your friends and family that you love so much, not get it in the same way that you get it not value the information in the same way you value it and not put it into action in the way that you have put it into action. It is very, very difficult. And at some point you just have to accept that everybody is learning at their own pace. And if we all look ourselves in the mirror, there were probably many instances where we were given information that was totally going to help us, would have helped us, but we didn't do it right away. And it took us some time and we just have to trust in that. The best thing you can do is lead by example and share recipes and meals in the most kind, friendly way possible. If they can dabble in it and try some things and maybe one day they have a little bit of a recipe that you made and they're like, oh wow, that's actually good. It could you know, start churning things a little bit, but just like Chef AJ was saying, you can't force it on them. And the more you do that, actually, the less likely you're going to get the outcome you're looking for. So um, you got to be patient. Yeah. Colleen says, do we also get the recordings because my husband works odd hours? And if that's the case, Robbie, like if they miss one module, is it available very soon afterwards? Yes, we will make the recordings available very soon. And there are already a lot of recordings that will be available from re uh, previous retreat lessons and lectures. And you will get the, the meal plans right away. And yes, so people who are working odd hours or if they have to work, you know, a portion of the event, but they can attend other portions, it's still a smart idea to sign up, be there for what you can live, and then refer back to the recordings the following. Hey, sorry about that, Robbie. No I love having some animals join the party. <laughs> so Three Drops of Sunshine says, I am eating no fats whatsoever. For me, it has been a slower, steady, gradual drop in blood sugar, no dramatic drops. But hey, it drops a drop, right? A drop's a drop. And first off, I want to say it's, if you're eating whole foods and this is just a nuance, I'm not like calling them out. I'm just trying to make a teaching point here. If you're eating whole foods, it's impossible to eat zero fat. There are fats in all the foods you're eating, potatoes, rice, beans, bananas, lettuce, bell peppers, tomatoes, all whole foods contain fat and they actually contain essential fatty acids. And when you eat enough of these whole foods and they can come together, you meet your requirements for alpha linoleic acid and linoleic acid, okay? So you can meet your essential fatty acid requirements through this, this diet. We advocate an insurance policy, which is one tablespoon of ground chia seeds or ground flax seeds in the morning. You pick one of, not both, just pick one. And you do that. And then you have already met your essential fatty acid requirements right then and there with that one little addition to your breakfast, everything else is a bonus. So with that said, you're not, you can't be doing a zero fat diet. Um, when you're seeing slow and steady progress, you're exactly right, Chef AJ, that's something to celebrate. But oftentimes 
What's even more important to celebrate is that in that case, people either kept their medication the same or reduced their medication all while doubling, tripling, quadrupling their carbohydrate intake. So you did experience an improvement in insulin sensitivity, your body's ability to metabolize, metabolize carbohydrate rich food did improve. And that's something to celebrate. And that means something. It's very significant. And that's exactly what we talk about in our book. Insulin sensitivity matters. It matters for short-term and long-term health and your chronic disease risk. So that's something to celebrate. Um, if we are not seeing people dropping medications as quickly as we would like to see, again, it's important to get a C-peptide test and truly understand. We got to get a picture how much insulin is your pancreas producing? Is it compromised? Is it not compromised? And then we can continue to make refinements and do adjustments throughout the process to make sure you reach your goals. Nice. So we've talked about this, I think, a lot of times, and that's how I was able to meet for you, Dr. Rick Dina. But Dina said, how much overt fat does Robbie eat? About the same amount as me, and neither of us are dead. And I got to thank you, Robbie, because you're a guy, and I think, I think uh, at least the people that I have studied business with say that men get attacked far less on social media like YouTube and Instagram. Women get attacked and bullied more. But when people attack me because I haven't eaten any nuts, seeds, or avocado in almost nine years, and yet my omega-3 fatty acid blood test every year gets higher and higher when people tell me how dangerous it is and whatever. And I go, well, Robbie Barbero does. <laughs> That's amazing. I love it. I love it. Yeah, and, and what I love about what you're doing here, and again, we both advocate for this, get tested use objective data to drive your decision making process and you can do this through omega quant that you can figure out what is your essential fatty acid status inside your body right now and if for whatever reason it is compromised and it's very low you get to make the decision of how you want to address that situation and i recommend working with a plant-based physician um, Lori Marbus at Plant-Based Telehealth and her team, which includes now Dr. Michael Clapper and uh, Chris Miller, excellent doctors. They can help guide you through this. Rick Dina can help guide you through this. But the bottom line is, if you are compromised, you could use a supplement to maybe get yourself back. And then you could decide to make lifestyle changes in order to optimize your conversion. Or you could decide, you know what? I've probably been low for a long time. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm going to try and make lifestyle changes and I'll retest in three months and I'll see where I'm at. That's your choice, your risk. It's up to you. But the bottom line is say, we're safety first. We, we understand the importance of a healthy essential fatty acid status. We know the importance of EPA and DHA. We wrote about this in our book. We've looked at the science. Nobody's denying the importance here and nobody is trying to you know, advocate anything that's unsafe here. So get tested, make your decisions based on where you're at. This is test, test, I believe. They can get one test for 59. And there's a one that's a little bit more comprehensive. That's 99. So megaquant.com, O-M-E-G-A, quant, Q-U-A-N-T. Um, and then you can go from there. So it's important to, to be safe. And, and I know, I think there's a lot of people, it's funny you're saying how, you know, men get attacked less and, you, and that could be true. Um, and, but also, um, I know a lot of women are concerned about this topic for hormonal health, and, and that's important. And I just want to acknowledge how significant that is, and you can address this with data. Nice. And will there be a lot of interaction in the live retreat? Like, people ask you and Cyrus questions? How will that Tons work? Tons of interaction. Tons. They're going to ask you questions. They're going to ask me okay. questions. They're going to ask Cyrus, Kylie. We have Adam and Mark, two of our coaches who have themselves reversed type two diabetes for many, many years, completely put it behind them, got off a lot of, you know, awful medications as well, whether it's blood pressure or depression or stuff like that, they've had amazing transformations. So they'll be there and every session has a Q and A time. So Rick Dina will be coming in for Q and A. Um, you have time to talk to Dr. Jim Loomis with Q and A, Dr. Will Bolskowitz is going to be a Q and A. So there's a lot of really personalized time. And if you choose to, 
you know, sign up for the version of the retreat that includes a small group coaching or the private coaching, then of course you get even more individual attention. Blair says, does Robbie anticipate it being in person again at some point in the future when it's safe to travel? 100%. The answer is 100 million billion percent. Whenever it's safe to travel, um, we will be having another retreat in Costa Rica. We will be eating mangoes together. We will be swimming together in the ocean and throwing Frisbees to each other. And you will join our buffet of unlimited plant-based foods, just like Dr. McDougall's been doing for years. You just come and we have plates and plates of fruit and squash and beans and quinoa and all kinds of vegetables and delicious sauces and herbs and spices and mushrooms and plantains. We're going to teach you guys how to eat plantains at this retreat. Oh my yes. gosh. I love plantains. Well, I know you don't eat things cooked, but air fried plantains are unbelievable. I'm sure they are. I'm, I, hey, a raw plantain is pretty special too. Yeah. Who does the uh, food at your live retreats? Is it the, the, the chef of wherever the venue is, or do you bring somebody in? So we do not have any specific chef. Um, it is really, it's our team and it's the, the team at the venue that puts the meals together. But to be honest, um, it's nothing complex. And that's part of what we're trying to teach. That's part of the beautiful takeaway from our retreats is you literally are given a buffet at every meal of individual ingredients. There's a couple things that are flavored a little bit. Maybe we flavored the beans or something. Maybe we made some sauces or some dressings, but you're just going to go down the line. You're going to see a plate of mangoes. You're going to see a plate of papaya, a plate of bananas, a plate of pineapple. That's like a breakfast, you know, plantains. And then for lunch and dinner, you'll have like steamed plantains. You'll have steamed cauliflower, steamed broccoli. Um, then you'll have a whole bowl of butternut squash, a whole bowl of acorn squash, and then a, an instant pot tub full of beans that have been flavored. And there's quinoa, like lunch and dinner includes those little bit more calorie dense options in addition to fruit. And you have lettuce at every meal and, and arugula and, and uh, cilantro. Like it's just literally that simple. And people are mind blown at how delicious these meals taste how much they get to eat, how much reduction they are seeing in their medication use while their fasting blood glucose is dropping. People are getting off heart pre or, uh, blood pressure medications literally within three days. I mean, you know this, we've been seeing this for years and years at you know, True North and, and McDougal's retreats. Like it's just the true application of the lifestyle just provides some incredible results consistently. That's amazing. So, you know, I agree with you. It's, it's simple eating that's so delicious and people just, they want recipes and recipes and recipes and meal plans. And it's like, when they can be in an experience like that, they realize just ingredients taste good. You can mix them together any way you want, create your own yeah. recipe. And it's so doable and it's practical. And we're going to go through a, one of my favorite lectures during this retreat is I'm going to go through a list of packaged foods that we recommend. There are a lot, and I, this is something I, a lesson I learned from Jeff Novick, who I know you're a fan of, Chef AJ, and just a true legend in this space, but teaching us how to eat, number one, minimally processed foods. That's an accurate phrase right there, minimally processed. And the fact that packaged doesn't mean bad in 2020, okay? There's a lot of really, really quality ingredients that come in a package. There's quality meals that come in a package. There's combinations of whether that's you know frozen vegetables or whatnot that can make your life very easy, can save you money, can save you time, and you learn to combine these things and flavor them properly with a good old Chef AJ sauce, and you, you, you're gonna love your meal. Like, we are committed to people loving every single meal. This is not a sacrifice. This is not a, oh, I'm just gonna like have to willpower my way through this, and I'll just like, I, I want the results, but I'm just gonna have to give up the good food. No, 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 no. This stuff tastes good. Your taste buds adjust. They come to life. You begin to appreciate the nuanced flavors in different varieties of produce, in different ways that produce can be prepared, in different textures. And it's just a lot of fun. Mm. Amazing. So here's a great question. Do you have to be raw to heal? Absolutely not. <laughs> the answer is no. Um, we have uh, the long, a laundry list of evidence of showing the metabolic benefits and safety of all the foods that we include in the green light list of the Mastering Diabetes Method. That's gonna be starches such as potatoes, yams, butternut squashes. That's gonna be 
lentils, peas, and beans, red lentils, brown lentils, all the varieties of beans, pink beans, azuki beans, <laughs> navy beans. You're going to have peas, like sugar snap peas, stuff like that. <clears throat> um, green peas and intact whole grains. I mean, the research supporting these foods is long and it's thorough and it's very clear that when you eat them in their whole intact form, you're going to get the best results. So that's what we encourage people to do. Great. So here's a fun question. Ravi, what's your produce bill? <laughs> my produce bill. Oh my gosh. Honestly, I should be doing a better job of tracking it. Um, it it's going to be high. It's going to be absurdly high. I'm willing to spend money on the food. I think it's, it's my medicine. It's also for me personally, it's just something I enjoy. You know, some people like they spend extra money on, you know, I don't know, fancy clothes or something or whatever things that, you know, they enjoy that just enriches their life. Really, really high quality produce from very, you know, high quality farms, you know, within the Southern Los Angeles area. It's just a treat for me. So when I go and I buy and Cherimoya seasons around and Cherimoya costs like five fifty a pound, like that's ridiculous. That's very expensive. And I'm going to try and eat like, you know, two, two or three cherimoyas at a meal. All of a sudden that becomes a very expensive meal. But that to me, that's like the red wine that somebody might you yeah. know, splurge on or, or the fancy restaurant. Somebody might, somebody might go to Crossroads and treat themselves or something. I'm just treating myself to good fruit. I also will say I do have a balance though. I do have my splurges, but I save a lot of money at the wholesale market. So when I go to the wholesale market and I get a case of bananas, 40 pounds, for like $5, $10 and I freeze them and I make a lot of ice cream. Um, I go to the farmer's markets right now and um, this is exclusive content here, Chef AJ. I haven't revealed this. So only people who are seeing this are gonna know this because I've been careful. Um, I get like cases and cases of free peaches. Free peaches <laughs> because the vendor thinks they're overripe. When I think they're perfect, they just have a little bit of give, a little bit of give. Oh my That's goodness. Where I want to eat a peach. That's crazy. So I, and that, those are expensive, but yeah. so I have a balance. Well, you save a lot of money on doctors because you really don't go. That's true. That's right. Yeah. So Ellen says, Robbie has inspired me to eat more fruit. Does Robbie have some tips for keeping ants away from the fruit in the house? Oh, wow. Okay. Well, if you have ants, that's an interesting problem. I would start, I don't say, I'm not gonna say I have a good tip for ants. I would Google like a natural remedy to, um, you know, take care of ants. But um, the most important tip I can give you is to make sure you don't let any open fruit stay on your countertop or on your shelf. So if your bananas have split a little bit, like at the top, that means it's open. If you are trying to, if you have a peach or something that you're somehow storing on your counter and it's got like a little, a little scrape and you can kind of like see inside, like the skin has been broken in any way, shape or form. That is a fruit you've got to either put in the fridge or put in the garage if it still needs to ripen more, or you just got to get it out of your kitchen because that will attract fruit flies. It could potentially attract ants. It's when the fruit is exposed. When it's, skin is in full intact and it's covered, even though it has a great aroma, that is not going to attract fruit flies. It has to be exposed. So you got to do produce management. I, as you can see behind me, have you know a lot of produce and I think it's worth it and valuable five minutes each night to look at all your produce, like build this into a habit. You just, you touch all your produce, you see what's going on. And if it's a little bit ripe, you put it in the fridge, you know what to do with it tomorrow, but Produce management is important. I love that produce management. This has been so much fun. I love talking to you, Robbie. I'm sorry Cyrus couldn't join us, but I'll be seeing both of you inside the Mastering Diabetes virtual retreat. I'm so excited. You have some of my favorite people, like the, the Sherzai's at Dr. Will V. So I'm so honored that you asked me to participate. And yes. I hope you guys will, will come or at least check it out. I've been posting the link all throughout the broadcast. So see, and I know it's not, it's not endless. There's only a certain number of seats. That's right. That's right. There's only, we can only um, fit like a certain number of people in the, we can fit unlimited in Zoom technically, but like the thing is we can only fit a certain number of people to give personal attention. And that's why it's going to be capped because we are promising that personal attention. And so you do want to claim your spot because we are definitely running out. It's filling up pretty quickly. That's great. Well, I'm really looking forward to it. Thanks so much for doing this. It's the next best thing to being there in Costa Rica. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us and having me on your show. I'll catch you later.
Anytime. And thank you guys so much for being here. Please come back tomorrow at 11 a.m. when I have Chef Jarena Burton, the author of many best-selling books, demonstrating zucchini fritters with a ranch dressing and a potato salad. Take care, Robbie. Bye-bye. See ya.